Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name is Gabby Pinkerton. I am a destination wedding planner for adventurous couples, but I share a lot about Pinterest on this channel because in 2020, I decided it was time I diversified my income and I launched a Pinterest strategy company. So we basically teach wedding pros how to use Pinterest to attract and book their ideal clients. And that's something that we've been doing in our wedding business for several years. So I figure it was about time to teach other people how to do it. So you can expect a lot of Pinterest style videos, um, tutorials, tips, all that stuff on this channel and a little bit of wedding planning stuff um, for inspiration for you maybe. So today I'm actually gonna be showing you a um, live chat that I had with a fellow Pinterest strategist. Her name is Precious Rogers. She specializes in Pinterest ads or AKA promoted pins. So this was a chat we had in our private Facebook group. I will link that Facebook group below if you guys want to join in, it's totally free. Um, it is Pinterest for wedding pros and creatives. And anyway, Precious and I have this awesome conversation about promoted pins, um, ads, why they're so different than Instagram and Facebook, best practices. Like I ask the questions that I truly wanna know because this is something that I want to do in my business pretty soon. Now, I personally teach all organic growth on Pinterest and that will take you very far in your Pinterest journey. But at a certain point, you may wanna transition into promoted pins or advertising uh, on Pinterest and that's why I thought this conversation was gonna be really good to have um, with our Facebook group. So without further ado, here's our chat. Okay. <laughs> it says live, we're off to a good start. Um, <laughs> So, okay, first, I mean, first question, and I know you wrote here, Presh Rogers, do you prefer to go by Presh or Precious? Um, both. My my full name is Precious, but you can do Presh, it's fine. <laughs> great, great. Um, Presh, welcome to our Facebook group. I, For those of you who don't know Presh, she is an amazing Pinterest guru, Pinterest expert herself. We met on Clubhouse, where all new connections are made, I feel like, these days. And I've been in some of her rooms listening to her speak and connected with her over Instagram. And I was like, okay, she's got to come talk to our audience about um, at Pinterest ads, which is called promoted pins. And I, this is something that I think a lot of people start on Pinterest with the idea of going organic and they can get pretty far with organic reach for sure. But for those that are ready to step it up a notch, I definitely wanna have this conversation today and I we're gonna get really honest. So Presh, please introduce yourself. Tell us kind of what your specialty is. How did you come about focusing on Pinterest um, and all that good stuff? Yeah, so hey guys, I am Presh and I like to call myself the Pinterest Badass. I don't know if you can see my shirt, it says Badass Ooh. on there. Um, <laughs> and I am a Pinterest Badass as well as an ad specialist. So I help coaches, content creators, and service providers basically pimp Pinterest um, to get more eyes on their content and grow their email list with action takers. Um, and I love doing that with ads. I do it organically as well, but ads is like my favorite way to do it because I'm impatient. And um, Pinterest is a slow burn, as we know. So I like to just nudge it a little faster to really get the results I want even faster. Ooh, okay. I like that you say that because for everybody who starts their Pinterest journey, the first thing I say is like, it's different than Instagram. Like Instagram, you get that instant gratification where you post something, you get a like, you get a comment, whatever that is, but then it dies off after about 24 hours. And on Pinterest, to your point, it's a slow burn. Like it's really a marathon, not a sprint. And while it can be awesome to have something that picks up a few months from now and then it grows and grows. It's like the snowball effect. It is slower to start and you have to put in this still this consistent time and effort into it um, before you get results. So I guess tell us a little bit kind of in your, uh, with your knowledge, really what the difference between a Pinterest ad is versus maybe an Instagram or a Facebook ad. Cause I think a lot of us are familiar with Instagram ads. We at least see them, we see Facebook ads, but what do you feel is different about a, a Pinterest ad? 
Yeah, so there's a few things, but um, one of the things kind of going back to Pinterest being slower than Facebook and Instagram is that even Pinterest ads are slower than Facebook and Instagram ads. Um, they're not, it's not going to take you like three months for your ad to start actually working, but it might take you two to four weeks before you really get things going, as opposed to with Facebook ads, from what I know, they work pretty fast. Um, but it's also a different audience. And there's still something that to keep in mind, just because something is working faster, doesn't mean that you can't do both. So one sec, you froze for a second. I just want to make sure oh. I didn't freeze. <laughs> Uh -oh. back. Can you hear me? Okay, great, great. <laughs> yeah, so um, that's one of the main differences. The other difference is that it's Facebook ads, people, you know, when we're on the platform, we're there to kind of be on Facebook or be on Instagram. We're not really there, there to like find something that we didn't go on Facebook today and say, I hope I see that ad that for that right. thing that I'm not looking for. <laughs> we're not going, right. we're not going in there for that. Whereas for Pinterest, you are going there for a specific thing and you happen to see a pin for your um for your problem that you have and it just so happens to be a Pinterest ad because you don't really know that until you look at the bottom of the pin to see that it's been promoted. Yeah. You just see it in the search results like you would see any other pin. So that's what I, um, one of the things that I love is different about them is that I feel like Facebook and Instagram are kind of interrupting what you're on the platform to do. Yes. They're still very effective, obviously, but with Pinterest, it's like more seamless. It doesn't interrupt with what you're there for because you're there to find a solution to your problem. That's yeah, I love that you say that because as a user of all these platforms too, I'll start looking and I'll scroll through Instagram and I'll see it, uh, it's clearly an ad and I like make a point not to click on it because I'm so oh, annoyed. I'm that, <laughs> yeah. And so I'm like so annoyed that it's disrupting my scroll, you know? And so whereas on Pinterest, I've been not fooled, but I've been scrolling and I will stop in my tracks because I'm like, oh, and I've noticed and we'll talk about what the best type of media is for a Pinterest ad in a bit. But I've noticed a lot of videos of a lot of loops or short things or uh, was it stop photo or stop video or whatever that is where it's kind of yeah animation and i was like wow actually this is really interesting and i am tempted to click on it so it does definitely blend in a little bit more like you said um i had yeah i had also heard and tell me your thoughts on this um that pinterest ads were less expensive than facebook or instagram ads Yes, they definitely can be because of a number of reasons. It could be because it's less competition. It could be because after a while, Pinterest is putting your ad in front of the people who, based on their data, is it's um converting in the in a better way. They know like, oh, they've been converting, they like this type of things already. So it could be different things. It could be your audience that's on Pinterest, it could be your audience that's on Facebook. So it's Usually, um, like I have a client right now, her um, her Pinterest ads, like we are averaging 87 cents per um, email sign up. So it's okay. pretty, pretty great for her for her to have those type of sign ups for her email. Um, but she also runs Facebook ads and they're not as low, but they work a little faster. So okay. it's just knowing where you want to be on that pathway and knowing how to make the ads work for you. Mm -hmm. um, but they can work, they can be cheaper and require a little less, um, cheaper, but require a little more time in the beginning, like I said. So they yeah. might take a little longer. Like there are some people that can run Facebook ads. You can run it for a week and you know, that's it. Whereas um, yeah. Pinterest ads, you need to actually take more time. Usually I give ads about a week to even optimize before I even touch them again. So it's going to take much more, um, much time, more, more time, just like anything on Pinterest than it does on the quicker, um, more social platforms, I would say. Yeah. And so that leads me to believe. So if you had like you were launching, so a lot of wedding pros have gone into the education space and people are wondering, well, how how do I, you know, work both sides on Pinterest? But one of the things is if you have a program or something that's launching in a couple of weeks, maybe the route of 
Facebook ads make sense if there's a deadline, right? Like if there's a time crunch or you're, we have someone in the wedding industry who just launched a book. If she's selling a book, she, you know, wants to have her pre-sales or whatever that is on a certain date and ads might make more sense for her. But whereas someone who has a reoccurring service or product where it's like a wedding planning, wedding photography, it might be okay to run Pinterest ads that are constantly going. It could take, you know, you could run them as long as you want, as long as you are still selling that product or service. Would that, would you think that makes sense? Yes, especially I always tell people like when launches, like I've run um, Pinterest ads to like summits before, but I've had time, like I've had about a month of time between okay. when the summit is happening and when I'm starting the ad because it might um, actually optimize really quickly. You don't really know until you start really seeing the ad, but because you don't want to touch it too much, if you have like only a week, it doesn't really make any mm -hmm. sense. But if you have right. like three to four weeks, you can try it out, test it out, see what happens. You might actually do really well with it. Um, but if it's really time sensitive, like a week or two weeks, definitely I yeah. recommend probably Facebook ads or Instagram ads because they do work quicker. Um, yeah. So yeah, that that is a, a good way to put it. And then if you're going for something that's like you stay long term or evergreen, definitely try your hand at Pinterest ads and see over time, what is your best, like what is converting the best. And even mm -hmm. if you're using both, you can, um, they actually work well together because they can retarget one another. Right. Yeah. That's a good point. Um, that, then I just thought of a question. Okay. Before I get in any further, I want to make sure that you guys, if you're liking this, if this information is helpful to you, please give me a big thumbs up. This really, really helps my channel. And if you're not subscribed already, please go ahead and do that below. Hit the little bell notification that will let you know when my next video is live. So I really try hard to make these videos, uh, live every Monday. And um, I would love to hear feedback from you. If there's any type of content that you would like to see on this channel, please, please let me know. Follow up to that. Oh, do you think it matters how your Pinterest account was going prior to advertising? So for example, if someone is new to the platform and they're like, well, I have some pins, I don't have like a big strategy, but then they hired someone like yourself to create an ad. Do you think Pinterest cares about how well your account was doing before or does it not matter? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because they're just going to show the pin the way that if somebody like me sets it up so, so it can be shown in the search results or shown to yeah. code, code audiences. Um, the only thing that matters is that one, you've already installed your Pinterest tag um, so that Pinterest can start building up your audiences. And two, if you are new, I would suggest doing a consideration campaign, which is a traffic campaign. Mm -hmm. They just changed the name because okay. that way you can warm up your Pinterest tag, which is just like a Facebook pixel. If anyone's familiar with pixels, um, you can warm it up more. So Pinterest kind of gets more familiar with who's actually interacting with your pins um, before you jump to like a conversion campaign. Uh. And then the other thing is that you want to, it's more about your back end. Like what are you your goal for using the Pinterest ad. So if it's like to get more people on your email list to sell your products, you have to make sure you have your funnels in place because yeah. you might get yeah. the traffic, but if it's not converting the way you want it to, then it's like a waste of you know money. Yes, and so this is really important, you guys, because we talk about this all the time, how we can, as Pinterest strategists, we could, we could drive traffic to your website all day long, but if your website is crap, they're not converting, right? So if you're sending them to a broken link or just the home page of your website, that is a short-term strategy, but people are going to bounce pretty quickly. So to your point, Presh, yeah. like if you don't have a sales funnel set up or some type of engagement call to action, like what is your goal with that? And then how does your audience get to know you through email, uh, an email sequence, and then perhaps they buy. So yeah. Yeah, and we'll and we'll talk about kind of best practices in a second here because um, I want to you know to to and this is really honestly beneficial for me too. I know there's only a few people tuning in live, but this is something that I'm like I feel like I need to do a Pinterest ad, but I have 12 million ideas and I don't know what's going to work best. Um, 
Okay, so, and anybody who's watching live, feel free to drop any questions in the comments. We will take your, uh, we will answer all of them at the end of the, the conversation. So like in the, another, in the next 20 minutes or so. Um, but okay, moving on. So my next question for you is, talk to us about best practices. So most of our audience is a service-based wedding pro, however, um, offline we talked that there are a few um product base and we have a handful of creatives creatives in here that um i didn't want to totally close it off just to wedding pros but if other creatives wanted to come in and uh, be part of the pinterest conversation great so i would say you know tell us kind of your best practices when someone's looking to create an ad on pinterest what do they need to look for whether from image style to setting parameters. I mean, you just told us a little bit of information about um, the traffic, con or what was it called? The traffic campaign versus the yeah. conversion campaign. So the where do we start? Campaign and now. Oh, yes. I, right. If, um, I was listening to, um, I'm pretty sure, you know, um, Simple Pen Media. Um, yeah. They were talking about it and it was like, why do they make these both C's with consideration and conversion? Because now we keep like, oh you like, wait, what did I say? Um, but it is pretty new, like maybe even like a month, I think, if that, um, that they changed the name. But um, yeah, so my first thing when it comes to, of course, the pin image itself is how it's important on Pinterest regardless. And it's pretty much kind of the same things that I tell my clients when it comes to organic. I always have a call to action, even more important on ads because you don't want to waste time with people clicking on your ad and um, they, they're not wanting to go to whatever it is that you're, you're doing. So that, that's my garage opening. Yeah, sorry. It's like this loud vibrational earthquake situation every time the garage opens. I was like, wait. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, so your Pinterest <laughs> images always have a call to action. So like, say for instance, if you are driving traffic to maybe you have um, like a wedding planner or something like that, you want to have like download now, sign up now. Um, what else could be? Use those are the main ones yeah. for like getting the email address. But you want people to know, the pinners to know that before they click, to kind of get in their mind frame that I'm going to probably have to give over my email okay. address before I get there. Um, so you definitely use a call to action on your pins. You can definitely use video pins or static pins. Um, I've seen good results with both. If you have really good video related to like what it is that you're doing, like say if it is a product pin, mm -hmm. I, I was telling um, Gabby, I'm not too sure what product pins for, per se, but I know product pins actually can be promote it themselves. Um, but if you can have a product pin that's like a video maybe of like, say mm, you have a sale or something like that, like a, a reel or TikTok or something like that that makes yeah. it interactive, um, that would catch yeah. people's attention, that probably works better because when it's a product, kind of, we want to see it in action. We want to see, yeah. you know, if I'm getting married, I kind of want to see, just if you just show me the veil by itself, I'm like, oh, it's pretty. But you always look to kind of see it on people and see how it works it or see how beautiful it is. I have yeah. a friend, who's, um, she makes um, custom wedding bells and like she puts all her stuff on and I'd be like, oh my God, I'm not even mm -hmm. getting married, but I'm going to have to get a bell from you because yeah. you just see it in action. So even that having that video and using that as a, a ad itself probably will be more helpful for people to actually see and know that they're going to buy something. Um, mm -hmm. And, and do you feel... Oh, sorry to cut you off. I want to, before I forgot, do you feel like um, an iPhone photo still is a really good or video or do you feel like it has to be curated? Because I know Pinterest came out and said, we don't always want everything to be perfectly curated. We want to see how you're using products, how you're, um, your how to's, your all this stuff. So I think sometimes people get really scared about ads because they feel like then they have to hire maybe a photographer, a videographer, a, like a graphic designer. How do you feel about stuff that's maybe recorded on their own or shot on their own? I think you can still make it tasteful. I think our phones are genius. <laughs> These days, the cameras on the phones are really good. I think it's about just you know, being in the right lighting, um, being in the right mm -hmm. setting so that you are focusing on what it is you're supposed to focus on um, and not just having it where it's like, it's just like 
there, I guess, or something like that. So just yeah. still make it where it's enticing. I don't think it has to be like a professionally, like a professional video or anything like that. Um, I think it just needs to actually get across what it is and be actually something that will be interested in clicking on. Like you yourself yeah. need to look at it and be like, if I was scrolling down Pinterest, would I want to click on this? And be honest yeah. with about it. <laughs> Yeah. And that's that you bring up a good point. And that's something I was actually in a clubhouse room this morning and I was chatting. I was like, listen, if when in doubt, put yourself in your client's shoes, how, how would you feel clicking on something and having it take you to X, Y, Z page? If that doesn't feel good, your clients, your potential clients aren't going to like that too. Or how do you feel looking at this video? Do you feel you're like, Ooh, this is very intriguing. I actually want to know more about it. Or are you like, Oh God, that's, looks terrible, you know? So really put, take that time, step away from kind of the business CEO person and take a look at it as a user. And how do you, how does it make you feel? How do, um, how quickly can you get the information that you thought you were clicking on all that kind of stuff? Um, yeah. so yeah, you bring up a good point there. Yeah. So definitely your pin images. That's the first thing. Um, because once you start running your campaigns, if your campaigns are not getting any clicks, that's one of the things you might want to look into. Um, of course, there's other things too. So the next thing will be doing your keyword research. So if you're using keywords to have your campaign show up in certain keywords, you want to have like a list of probably at least, um, I usually say at least 100. I think Pinterest says at least 40, but I say at least 100 because then you can go and shorten the list. Um, okay. once you see which ones are, are or are not working. And the great thing about using keywords is that you can see in the back end if a keyword isn't working. Okay. And it helps with your organic strategy as well. Because if you're putting stuff out there and your um your main campaign is using keywords to get in, in front of people, and mm -hmm. people are say for instance, it's um maybe it's like a, a wedding planning or it's now stuck in my head. Sure. So yeah, hey, that's great. <laughs> Works for our audience. Yeah. So maybe you have like a wedding planner and one of your keywords is wedding planning. Um, let's say wedding planning for millennials or something like that. Sure. A and well, that's actually a really great keyword. <laughs> it's probably this one. And then maybe you have one that you decided to do like um, wedding planner uh, or just indoor weddings or something like that. Because maybe the planning planner can help with people indoor weddings. But yeah. you look at the back end and you see that most of your clicks are coming from for some reason, indoor weddings and not from wedding planning, planning mm -hmm. um, millennials. Now for your organic strategy, you know, not to even use um, wedding planning or wedding planning. Um, millennials that much anymore because it's like, well, with the, when the Pinterest ad is running and it's going to like higher up in the search results, yeah. it's not getting clicked on. But this other keyword is actually getting clicked on that I don't even really yeah. use in my organic strategy. So it helps you actually with your long-term organic strategy as well as your Pinterest tra um, ad strategy too. So I love that about Ooh. running the keywords and stuff like that. You get so, really oh, I know. And I love that you said, okay, I, now I have like sub questions to my questions. <laughs> so first sub question, when you say a hundred keywords, we're not talking about putting a hundred keywords in one pin. No. We're talking oh. about in the back. Yeah, explain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. When you're setting up the ad, it's going to, it will ask you like interest, keywords. Um, it depends on the type of ad you're running. So if you're running to cold traffic, you might you might want to do cold traffic um, with keywords and interest. So it will have you put in a list of keywords that you want to um, target. When people type in those keywords, your ad will show up in those, those keywords, um, as well as certain interests that people are into, uh, it will target those people as well. So it's going to have you list those keywords out and um, that's where you will put those 100 keywords. So it's just really like, okay. if you, like you would think through, if it is a wedding planner, you would think through all the different keywords people could type in yeah. where it makes sense to find a wedding planner. Because I have seen Pinterest ads in places that I'm like, this ad you just put any keyword in because it doesn't make sense doesn't that make I'm sense. seeing a virtual assistant ad in like wedding planning. I don't know. They don't food. Don't, yeah. Don't really go there. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, why did you use this keyword? Unless they're using, cause they could also be using um, just cold traffic and it could be a pretty new ad where 
Pinterest is kind of like basing it off of um, the audiences. So it's different ways that the Pinterest sure. can um, optimize the pin, which is why it takes a little longer to make sure your yeah. pin starts going in the right places. But yeah, yeah. definitely and, not on the pin. Right. And that's honestly, that's where a specialist like you comes in because you know how to do that keyword research. And key, I mean, we know that keyword research is the most time consuming part of working with a client because we want to make sure we're not just throwing caution to the wind and good luck. Let's see what comes back. I mean, we do a B testing for sure to see what our audience, what the audience is relating to. But at the same time, we're not just going willy nilly. We're, we're figuring out what these keywords are and um, how to apply to ads. So I like that. Yeah. I like the put emphasis on keyword research for sure. So I have two more questions for you. Um, let's talk kind of financials with Pinterest ads. What would you say, and maybe you can give us an average of what your clients tend to spend. How much do people really need to spend to be effective with ads and what time frame? Cause I know you said, you know, obviously Pinterest takes a little bit longer. Um, what do most people tend to do? Yeah. So with any, paid marketing, you have to be ready to spend money in order to make money. And you have to be ready to take that risk. And because in the beginning, you probably might lose money <laughs> because it's yeah. new, especially if you're doing it on your own. Um, when I first started Pinterest ads for myself, I was like, oh, I don't want to like put too much money behind it. And then like my mentor was like, you're not going to see results with $3 a day. And I was like, really? Because like, that's Darn. what I'm most comfortable with. <laughs> like, that's like yeah. you know, $90 a month. I can do that. Um, yeah. Let me see if a question came in. Um, oh, awesome. But I definitely recommend if you can, because my, for my clients, I always recommend $20 um, daily at spend. So like $600 a month. Um, okay have to be willing to spend um we don't start at twenty dollars we start usually in my testing phase i start between um seven and ten dollars and then i'm moving my way up to 20 so okay. usually probably with within depending on the client because if they're very new to pinterest um and they're a new um, pinterest tag i usually do like a consideration campaign first let that run for about a month at about seven to ten dollars per day and then okay. I would switch to a conversion campaign because usually people want conversions. Um, yeah. And then with the conversion campaign, I would usually start at $15 a day and then we're working our way up to 20. Um, so probably within like two months, you should be ready to like move to $20. To 20. Um, but no, even if you start higher earlier, if you can, you're going yeah. to see a return quicker because you're giving Pinterest more money to play with. Yeah. Just had you know more money means more data, and then they yeah. can know the right people to continue to, to continue showing it in front of. Um, yeah, because if you're only doing a little bit of money, you're not going to be able. Even what my mentor used to tell me is that you know if you have say five dollars a day, and if you're doing a conversion campaign for five dollars a day, and you're getting one sign up for a dollar, and that's lucky because <laughs> you're not getting right. as money. So that means how many people have to see your ad before you really start getting those signups mm -hmm. and are you going to have enough, you know, is it going to get shown enough to get enough people to see your campaign, to see your page, to get those signups? Probably not. Right. So then you're going to be like, well, I'm not really getting, if you have a thank you page with like an upsell or a tripwire, you're like, well, nobody's yeah. like buying this, um, low ticket offer, but it's like not enough people are seeing it. If by people sure. See it, that's all. So yeah. I, you might need 30 people to see it before one person buy your product. Right. So you have to keep in mind, um, like your conversion rate. And I have like this whole like yeah. spreadsheet for my clients that I go through to, to kind of show them like, this is what we need to get to. So you can really start yeah. seeing if things are actually going like you want them, want them to. But yeah, yeah. so start, have like an idea. If you can do $20 a day, start as high as you can. But yeah. if you're just testing it out, seeing how it works, seeing if you can get a few like email signups or get more eyes on your content, you can start between five and ten dollars a day. And OK, and I love this because and thank you for being honest about that price point, because for some they're thinking, oh, my gosh, six hundred dollars a month that I how am I going to be sustainable? Well, a few things. What is that? 
what are you converting them to, right? Is it um, an email subscriber, but then you have a killer email, like welcome sequence that is upselling them to a hundred dollar products at a product at the end of it, right? And so you just need to sell six of those in a month to make up your money. Or a lot of people in the wedding industry tend to spend that amount on ads within certain wedding um, blogs or certain wedding websites like the, the called the knot and wedding wire. Mm -hmm. And personally, the, the, this is not true for everybody, but a lot of feedback that I have heard about people who are advertising on those platform are getting budget, uh, you know, lower budget clients. And some people that works, that's their market and that's perfect but for those who want to go a little bit higher tiered maybe spend and folk truly focus your keywords on that luxury market on pinterest right like appeal mm -hmm. to that luxury client but get so specific like hone in on that client and really pick your keywords based off of what are they going what is that specific client going to search and so we're not talking about spreading your ad across all things wedding related we're mm -hmm. talking about pinpointing you're like describing your ideal client in all of these different facets of their life and where they live what they do whatever that is and what they'd be searching on pinterest to build their dream wedding so so i think it is a mindset shift and i've had a lot of thinking about advertising this year and being like you know what i'm with you crush like spend money to make money i think that's so we important have, but it we have to be even like me, I have a new um, digital product coming out and I'm like, huh, I want to put both Facebook and Pinterest ads behind it. And I'm like, OK, I got to like start putting money aside so that I have the money to put behind it. And I know it's a little scarier if you hire somebody because granted, you have to pay me and then pay your yes. ex in. So it's yes. like a little scarier. But you have to know, like you were saying about the welcome sequence, the nurture sequence is cold traffic. You cannot expect people to get on your email list and then you sell them on your $500 product, whatever it is. Or even if it's right. like, you know, you have a store with products and it's more up there, they might not be ready to buy that. So you have to kind of really get them to know you so they're more likely to purchase your things. Or like I said, use a thank you page and have like an upsell. Upsell, um, yeah. Like back to wedding planners. Maybe you have... Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you have like a, a $17 wedding planning, I don't know, like a digital wedding planner. Um, and that can be on your thank you page so they can help you get your ad spin mm -hmm. back immediately. Um, and maybe your opt-in is something like a wedding checklist. And then now you have the wedding planner on the thank you page that you upsell them. If they don't get it on the thank you page throughout your email sequence, the welcome sequence, yeah. you're um, constantly selling them on that, that thing. And then, you know, moving on to the bigger thing, because of course, people are only going to be, you know, searching for the wedding things for a shorter temporary period of time, because you don't totally. be engaged, hopefully, for longer than two years. I mean, <laughs> at this point, they have been, but hopefully this is the last of it. So, um, yeah, definitely knowing how to take that traffic and turn it into what you want to. Um, yeah. And be willing to put the money behind it and trying it out because you don't know until you try and you can't be scared. Because I've had clients who after, you know, a couple of weeks, they're like, oh, this is not working. It's like it's been two weeks. Yeah. Give it time. Give it time. And that people haven't even seen it. For two right. <laughs> like, right. And and same is true with an organic pin, right? Sometimes you're going to put it on there. And aside from story pins that get action pretty quickly, your organic pins are gonna take a minute for Pinterest to keyword them and put them in their algorithm, whatever it is that they do, and push them out to to people. So, yeah, it, we've talked about, we've said this at the beginning. You know, it's a slow burn with Pinterest. It's not uh, instant gratification, but I can see how this is a long term strategy that. You know, I think the dream for all of us is we want it to work in our sleep. Like we want it to continue to work and we don't have to check in on it all the time. And it still attracts the clients that we want. So, right. no, yeah, I love that. One thing, um, I forgot it that quickly. Oh no, my God. No. <laughs> like it's so, it's so bad. Like I, it was like right there. I was like, oh yeah, I want to mention that. 
And now it's gone. It's gone. It's okay. <laughs> It'll come back. It'll come back. Um, okay. Before we answer the question that we got in the comments, I want to end with one last question, which you touched on earlier, but what type of pin works best for an ad? We talked about a video pin, a regular pin. Can you do, can you promote a story pin? No, not that okay. I mean, um, I actually was looking it up earlier um, because story pins don't link to anywhere. Though right. They don't, they're, there's they're no point to keep people on the platform. Um, yeah. But yeah, definitely a video pin you can, um, a static pin. Um, and of course, if you do product, like if you have like a shop on Pinterest, you can do shoppable pins. Um, you can do product pins as, um, mm -hmm. as well. And, uh, well, carousel, but we don't have carousel anymore, I'm pretty sure. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> And would you say, so a lot of the times I, okay, once upon a time I dabbled in a Pinterest ad. I didn't know what I was doing. I clicked a few buttons, crossed my fingers and shot it out, right? Nothing happened, guys, nothing happened. I did that um, for a year, not a year ago, um, I think 2018. Mm -hmm. um, and I went back and looked at it and I was like, I had like 10 keywords. <laughs> okay, that. yeah, same, same. I, I didn't know any better. It was, I probably, I think it was doing like $3. Yep. It was, it was yep. bad. <laughs> yeah, same, same, but we've got to start somewhere, right? <laughs> um, but would you say, so for someone who's been growing their Pinterest account organically for a long time, I know we've collected some amount of data on the analytics and we have some pins that do significantly better than others, right? And there's some pins that like, personally, we have some that are four, five years old now and they are constantly going. Now, would you, because I know that's a, an option on Pinterest to just click boost this pin or promote this pin. No, tell us just why. Like on, just like on Instagram and Facebook, you shouldn't do it. The same thing is for Pinterest. Um, it's just, it's not as successful or optimized mm -hmm. as actually going in and setting up your pin in the right way, using the audiences okay. that you want to, doing all the back end things. Um, I don't know why platforms have them because all the app people just be like, don't use it. It don't work the way that you think it's going to. I, I guess it's, it's just to, to make catch paper. suckers. Yeah, it's, it's to catch like, suckers like us. Unin yeah. I did I boost a post on Instagram and I noticed nothing. Oh. <laughs> nothing. No, <happened>. nothing. <laughs> for Facebook. I was like, I'll do it. Nope, nothing happens. Um, and you'd be like, well, these things don't work. And it's like, no, you took the fast route. And yes it's not going to work. So yeah, definitely um, take the time to understand, set your Pinterest ad up the correct way and yeah. um, do what is necessary. Oh, I was going to mention, um, know that with ads, it's not just putting them out there and being like, okay, it's done. You have to test and tweak it. Mm, okay. <laughs> if like, say you put a pin out there or a campaign out there and you decide that you're going to do... Um, all all demographics you know maybe yeah. you did like all ages because everybody's oh. getting married you know right. people in the 80s get married too or it's like 65 plus so right you do like for some reason um i mean you're looking for brides but maybe you do you know men and women and undecided and then sure. you come back and you know after like the seven to ten days of letting it run in the beginning that's when you start making your tweets that's when you start okay. raising your budget um now making tweets as in going and looking at the data and saying, okay, is this, um, you know, should I turn off men or should I turn off this, these age ranges or, mm -hmm. you know, this one is performing better. You, you can do multiple pins within a campaign. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe you have like kind of like the AB testing. Um, yeah. You might have. So basically you're. And you're, I, are you saying that then the, the money that you've put towards that pin is going to get probably redirected and more hyper-focused on your new selections instead of being yeah. spread out across multiple pla yeah, like so places? You have to go yeah. And look at the data that you're seeing and then tweak it and test it, tweak it and test it until you're yeah. starting to get the results that you, you're wanting. Because yeah. you might start out at one way, you're like, okay, yeah, that, that pin image that I put out there, um, of like three of them, two of them are not performing like one of them is. So I'm going to turn mm -hmm. those two off because this one is already getting, say, 500 clicks a day. Clicks a day. The other ones are getting 20 clicks. Like they're, you're wasting money yeah. on that one. You want to turn yeah. those off. 
So you have to go and see what's happening and keep tweaking and testing in those like I my tweaking and testing phase is usually at the first month. So it's okay. that's why they take a little longer than other Facebook and Instagram ads because you have to go back in there and really tweak them and make them work the best way, the most optimized way. Oh, I love that. So helpful. Okay. And this is a great segue to the question that we got um, that says, I'm currently running an ad and I don't think I properly used keywords. Can I add them on to an ad that's still live? So basically, can you go edit something that is still running? Yeah, you just go and edit it. Um, you should give the option to edit the campaign or um, the ad group. And you will just go even on the, like, they should be like, if I can imagine this correctly. And there's like campaign ad group ads keyword under keywords. You can either add keywords there or you can go edit the campaign itself and then add the keywords there. Um, it will be a section where you can add keywords at. Um, so yeah, you can do that if you've been running the ad already or you can just start all over if you feel like it's necessary. Um, sometimes I suggest just start all over and go from there. Hmm. And is there a way to, when you're looking at your data, is there a way to know whether or not the image is doing well, or it's basically data based off of keywords mostly? No. So because you can, um, so you, you can do like, oh, let's see. So you can have two images, like say for instance, you have two images and you're using all the same keywords for both of those because sure. you will be using all the same keywords un unless you do two different ad groups. Um, but if they're all in one ad group, like cold traffic with keywords is your ad group, then those two images are going to be using the same keywords. But Pinterest is going to, they kind of like, once something is start, start doing well, they kind of mm. push that anyway. So that's okay. why it's like, unless they're both happening to be getting the same amount of clicks, um, then you might want to keep them running. But if one is getting more clicks than the other, Pinterest will probably naturally start showing that one more in the feed. Mm -hmm. um, so that way you'll probably see like this one is getting like, you know, a hundred clicks and this one only has like 20. Yeah. So that's when you will be like, maybe I should just turn this one off because it's not getting seen as sure. much. And another thing is if you pick a popular pin um, that you already have organically, which there's good, uh, good and bad to that. Um, if you, if you already have a pin that's doing well organically, it's kind of no reason to really promote it because it's already True. doing great. So you might yeah. want to pick another one that isn't doing as great. Um, but if you were to pick one, like the pin, pin image from something that was already doing well, even if you drive it to a different link, Pinterest is mm -hmm. probably going to push that one out more because their AI, their AI system is like, well, this pin image does well. So we're going to push this one above other images. So. Just I was going to ask that. Yeah, because part one was earlier we talked about can't, should you boost a pin that's going well organically? No, because you have no control over the settings on the back end. But part two is, OK, what if that we know that image already does well? What if we take it and turn it into a brand new ad, pr our own promoted pin? But I also wondered I guess when you're talking about ads, this maybe doesn't go into effect, but organic traffic wise, Pinterest doesn't want us to keep reposting the same images. It's wanting fresh new content over time. So I was curious if that would affect an ad if you just reuse a photo that already organically is doing really well. Is Pinterest like, eh, we, this one's already been going for five years, but no, because it's paid. No. So like when you go in, because when you go in the settings, you can pick from the your current content. So like I was okay. saying, like, you can even if like that ad goes to something completely different or that pin goes to something completely different. If you select that one to use as your Pinterest ad, you can put the URL that you want it to go to. So you can okay. have a promoted pin running going to maybe like your sign up page, then the organic pin goes to a blog post because okay. it's already, obviously it's out in the world, so it's already been going to that blog post. But maybe that same pin makes sense for. The sign up page so you can use that and it like you know they're going to two different things but you know that but the people on pinterest really don't right <laughs> right, right. You know, if they yeah. click on the promoted one they go to one thing they click on the organic one they go to another thing so right gosh 
Oh man, Prash, that was so insightful. And listen, the the two remaining people that are left on this live, shout out to both of you because you get all of this information. And uh, I will do kind of last call for any questions that you want to ask Presh about ads. No, no dumb questions. Nothing is off limits here. So please, um, if you have one, ask away. Um, but while we are waiting, if there's anything else that pops up, Presh, tell us where people can find you and maybe what offerings or services that you have that could be helpful for anybody looking to get into ads. Yeah. So um at press rogers on ig is my favorite platform to hang out on for my pinterest shenanigans and if you're interested in pinterest ads i have my um pinterest ads experience is what i like to call it because all my services are experiences <laughs> so that Love is um, to a start and it's just recommended of course if you don't have any funnels in place um i have like a vi i call it vib because b is for badass Day nice. when you start with <laughs> your funnels and work through what you need to actually set up in order to run ads because I don't want to start running ads and then you don't really have anything in place to actually convert your ad traffic or do anything with it and then you feel like it's not working for you. Sure. Um, and definitely it's also good if you if you don't know if your if you don't know if your um your offers convert from cold traffic, um, you then know you're going to have a testing phase um, mm. or convert, yeah, convert cold. Yeah, I'm like, which one is it? <laughs> so mm -hmm. if you already have like a, a system where people are converting from your, um, to your offer from cold traffic, then you kind of know, okay, it already converts. But if you never really run anything to cold traffic and you don't really know what's going to happen, then you're like, even testing even more with any type of paid marketing. You're trying to see what works. If my, you know, my landing page needs to be updated, if my funnel or my email sequence yeah. is not great, like all of that is testing, part of the testing yeah. because I've had clients who like, we've gotten people on her email list, but then once they get on her email list, they're not converting to her course. And it's like, she's sure. like, hey, I need to pause because my emails, I need to actually hire mm -hmm. somebody to come in do the email like sales marketing yes. for, for that part because it's not converting with cold traffic. So those type of things you kind of don't really know until you're running ads. Yeah. If you've never like had a cold traffic conversion kind of thing happening. The, oh, that's a great point. We have a couple questions. Okay, now I'm gonna press this button that says show and it should pop up. Oh, here we go. Okay, so Stacy, I know, look how fun. I just discovered this. Um, Stacy says it's also no question at the time she's gonna start first as tomorrow. And I'm excited because Stacy, I am inspired too. And I really I hope you tell us in the Facebook group like how your ads do, maybe uh, if you feel comfortable sharing keywords that worked really well for you, however comfortable, but please share your experience when you do it because uh, I will certainly share mine and that's that's really exciting. Yay. Um, okay, this one, for some reason, it doesn't have a name, but that's okay. Um, it says, my ad URL is directed to a Flowdesk landing page to collect email addresses to build my email list. Is this a no-no since I'm not directing to my website? And there was a follow-up here that says, the Flowdesk landing page is a sign up for a download, just to be clear. Um, mm -hmm. That's yeah. fine. Um, the only thing I would say is that do you have your Pinterest, um, your Pinterest event codes installed? Because that's the, that's the hard thing. Um, if you do go to a Flowdesk landing page to collect email addresses, I don't know if they have the option to redirect after they sign up to go to your website. So that way you can have the Pinterest tag um, for signups installed so that on your ad um, back end, you can actually see when signups happen. Otherwise, if you don't have those event codes happening, you don't know when signups are happening. So like, for example, um, I'm also a writer. I do fiction novels and I send traffic to this, <laughs> this thing called book funnel and book funnel. Um, they have the link to put in your Facebook pixel, but not Pinterest because Pinterest is still kind of new. Um, so I don't, when people sign up, I can see mm -hmm. people that signed up, but I don't, my Pinterest uh, like ad account doesn't see when I get any signups. So for me, I just use like a mm -hmm. consideration campaign because it's like, it's no reason to use a conversion campaign because then 
they won't be able to track the conversions because there's no sign up event call on the end where they will go at. Um, so you want to make sure that you can actually put those event codes in on your website. If you can't do it on Flowdesk, you might can, um, but I don't know Flowdesk back in. What about, okay, because this is a question I had too. What if you use something like pretty links? So for example, our website is gabbypickerton.com. No, so that won't work if it redirects. Like on, um, regular Pinterest, <laughs> regular Pinterest where you can't use any pretty links. Same thing for ads. You can't okay. Use Okay, so can't yeah, redirect it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. that's. I mean, it, it might because I'm thinking like with my email email provider marketing. Um, oh. When someone signs up for a form, like I have it redirect to like a thank you page. So that thank you page is on my website. So I'm thinking Flowdesk probably will do the same thing, and they would just redirect to the web page, and the the thank you page is where you will put your actual Let's track event code because you don't want to ah. put the tracking code on the sign up page because they haven't signed up yet. You want to put it on the thank you page because you know they've signed up. Right. Okay, that makes sense. Oh, because they could land to just the sign up page and back out. It's yeah. not the guarantee. There are different version. event codes like there's yeah. these there page traffic. So like, if you just want to track people who are going to the page, you can do like yeah. traffic or leads. Um, but if you want to track actual signups, you want to do it on the thank you page because they, they actually signed up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. Great. And they say that makes sense. Thank hey. you. So awesome. Oh, Prash. Well, um, where can, so obviously we can find you at Prash Rogers on Instagram. Um, and I really encourage anybody who's watching now or watch this later on, please connect with Precious. I mean, you're really my go-to for all things ads. And um, while I may test it out and dabble in it, I'm not optimistic that I'm going to do it right. So I'm probably going to come to you and be like, help. So no, please I'm, fix my I'll mistakes. Be, I'll be in the group too. Um, and I'll yeah. come back and post under this um, in the group. I have a new podcast episode that just came out. Um, on, I don't know if you guys know Elizabeth Hart. Um, it was actually a Pinterest ads um, podcast episode. So awesome. you can follow up for anything that I left out today. <laughs> like, yes. Yeah. Any information, please post that in the comments below. And thank you to the last two standing. We got a third come in, but yeah. thank you for the great questions. And um, Precious, thank you so much for your time. Go relax, go enjoy Netflix and a glass of wine or something like that. Yes. I'm going to walk first. Actually, oh yeah. Go walk. Get some fresh air. It's a nice day for yes. um, probably like 70, I think today. Um, you're Same in here, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, we're in Nashville. Yeah, so it's, it's kind of hot. It's 72, so it's still a nice day to go for a, a quick walk and then come back yes. and relax for the remainder of the day. So enjoy it's, your yes. time because it's still early there, but it's getting late. Thank you. <laughs> yes, yes. Thank, Thank you, you so much, you. Precious. Bye. Talk to you soon. Bye. Well, there you have it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was insightful. Be sure to follow Presh. Um, I've linked all of her information down below. She truly is a Pinterest expert when it comes to ads. She also has um, a different, definitely different fields that she specializes in. I specialize in more of the wedding industry. So if that feels like it's a good fit for you, I'm linking some of my freebies down below to get you started. And I hope to see you back here next week. Thanks so much, guys.